Now let's go over to Ndemiake who is following President Obama's Africa visit. Ndemi. Well, thank you so much, Vincent. President Obama is now back in Washington after a three-nation tour of Africa as Washington turns a fresh eye toward the continent and its fast-growing economy, policymakers and investors look for new ways to compete with China, which has already made huge strides. VOA's Natalie Liu has more. China's footprint in Africa is huge. The 20-story African Union Tower, which Beijing donated to the Continental Group, is a testament to the size of Beijing's ambition. Every country, as it achieves global greatness, uh, seeks to leave behind major landmarks that become evidence of its ascendance into global power. Winston Wally Soboyejo spoke to VOA via Skype. He is a professor at Princeton University. We must make sure that we combine these monuments with the development of people. Because ultimately, it is people-centered development that really matters. China has long described its relationship with Africa as a relationship between brothers in the anti-colonialist struggle. Beijing's recent rise as a commercial power interested in Africa's rich natural resources has aroused a degree of concern on the continent. Longtime Chinese activist Wei Jingsheng says Chinese investment in Africa often is tainted with corruption, a trait that travels abroad with Chinese state-owned or private enterprises which have become all too used to it at home. These people, they're used to doing business in a corrupt manner inside China. They take it with them to Africa. It inevitably causes resentment and resistance from ordinary people in Africa. Wei says U.S. and European corporations have been slow to invest in Africa because of the high risks involved, leaving an open door for China. Now both U.S. and European countries realize this approach is problematic, that Africa has almost been turned into China's backyard. Americans and Europeans now are rushing to find ways to change the situation. I'm not sure what they'll do. Professor Soboyejo, a native of Nigeria, says many Africans would welcome a greater U.S. involvement on the continent. Many people view and appreciate many things in the U.S. For example, they, they admire the U.S. educational institutions. They admire many things about the ability of the U.S. to manage its environment. They admire the quality of certain things that come out of the U.S., such as its movie industry, its ingenuity in IT. He also says the United States can win new friends and build opportunities for investment in Africa by stressing its commitment to free expression and its tradition of welcoming immigrants from many different backgrounds. I think with those kinds of investments by the U.S., with those kinds of connections by the U.S., you will see that Africa will become an increasingly vital trade partner in ways that will benefit both sides. President Obama seems to agree that the time is right. In a speech this weekend in South Africa, he said Washington is ready to up its game with new trade and investment and the possible renewal of the African Growth and Opportunity Act, which would remove tariffs for many exports from the continent. Natalie Leo, VOA News, Washington. Now, for more on Obama's visit to Africa, we are joined by Larry Hanauer. He's a senior international policy analyst at Rand Corporation. Thank you so much for joining us today, Mr. Hanauer. Thank you for having me. So now that President Obama is back, it's a good time to reflect on his visit. In your opinion, was it a successful visit? I, I think it was a successful visit. Um, uh, President Obama really succeeded in changing the narrative of U.S. policy toward Africa mm -hmm. away from aid and security uh, and toward private investment and economic growth. Uh, the initiatives he announced to promote trade, uh, investment and power generation, those are all uh, important initiatives um, that will greatly extend, uh, expand the, uh, the amount of private investment in Africa uh, and, and change U.S. policy in that regard. The package we just ran essentially was talking about, uh, Africa, about China's role in Africa over the years, many, many years. In fact, 
uh, as we even heard in the piece, has been described as a relationship of brothers, and now with the two African first ladies, sisters of Africa. With President Obama now making these initiatives, some have said that it's a little too late and that there's not much impact that the U.S. can make at this point. And also some of the issues that President Obama himself raised in terms of Africa's uh, problems with good governance, which has resulted in corruption and, uh, and you know, uh, poor rule of law, can those be effectively enforced? Sure, absolutely. No, I would, I would disagree that, um, I would not say these are too late. Uh, China's certainly been involved in Africa for many years, um, building infrastructure, um, power plants, um, doing a lot of construction work. Uh, and U.S. companies have not really been involved. They've seen more obstacles to investment, whether it's uh, political instability or poor infrastructure, uh, lack of financing. Um, and so uh, U.S. companies really haven't been focused on Africa. And I think the president's initiatives really will, uh, will change that. Um, the president announced a number of uh, a large amount of funding from the Exim Bank, mm -hmm. uh, OPEC, TDA, and others that will provide political risk insurance uh, and, uh, and other financing so that some of these deals can go through. So I think this really marks the entry of a lot of American uh, corporations in a significant way mm -hmm. uh, into important sectors in Africa, like infrastructure, manufacturing, uh, and a range of other, uh, of other areas. Now, the U.S. itself has also mentioned how Africa maybe has been too involved in Africa. Excuse me, China has been too involved mm -hmm. in Africa. How do you see the two coexisting in that economy? Yeah, well, despite the narratives that, that are, are really common out there, I think it's important to, to note that the U.S. and China really are not strategic competitors in Africa. Uh, we're not competing to get uh, African governments in one camp or another, like mm -hmm. the U.S. and Soviet Union were during the Cold War. Uh, U.S. and Chinese companies generally aren't involved in the same sectors. U.S. companies have been focused more on technology. Chinese companies have been focused more on infrastructure and construction. Uh, and in many cases, the U.S. and China aren't even active. Uh, U.S. and Chinese companies aren't active in the same countries. Mm -hmm. uh, Chinese companies, which are uh, backed significantly by, uh, by the state, either they're state-owned enterprises or they get state financing, mm -hmm. are much more willing to take risks and invest in countries like the Democratic Republic of Congo, okay. which American companies uh, are not. So we're not really uh, competing for influence and access, um, as many people would say. If anything, really, U.S. and Chinese companies are competing for a share of Africa's potential economic growth. Uh, and as President Obama said, uh, the more the merrier. The more mm -hmm. that are involved, uh, the better it is for, uh, for Africa. Let's talk about legacy. You know, every time when uh, Africans reflect on previous U.S. administration visits, Clinton, Agoa, mm -hmm. President Bush, uh, Pepfar, Pepfar, Millennium Challenge Corporation, mm -hmm. what do you think, even though he still has a few year, more years and he might go back to Africa, we're not sure, but mm -hmm. what do you think at this point his legacy, his strongest legacy on Africa mm -hmm. would be? Well, it, there's an interesting comparison with President Bush's legacy, given that both of them were in, uh, in Tanzania at the same, same time. time. Um, President Bush, during his, uh, his administration, uh, quadrupled foreign aid to Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's had a significant impact. But it seems that President Obama really wants to take a different approach. He's focused much more on uh, private sector-led economic growth uh, and having uh, investment, uh, rather than aid, empower Africans mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to lead their own economic growth and their own development. He's focused on youth. Is that uh, going to be a, quite a landmark? Uh, I think youth will like be a, a focus. It's almost like a Peace Corps, like what he's just introduced, the Washington Fellowship, African Youth Leaders, where they'll be coming in That's 500 right. every year. That's right. There have been initiatives like that in the past as well. I think it's impossible not to focus on African youth, uh, given the demographics on the continent, mm -hmm. uh, and given that, that African youth are likely to be a driving force behind future economic growth. But those sort of educational and cultural outreach initiatives um, will be an important part of what, uh, of what the United States does in Africa. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for thank joining us today. Larry Hanno, a senior analyst at the Rand Corporation.